In this session, we will be learning about a few basic abstract concepts like pseudocode and flowcharts. They help in getting started quickly in coming up with solutions for the problem that we are trying to solve even before writing a single line of source code. Computer program basically exists to help us solve problems. Now these problems and the associated complexity can range from being as simple as adding two numbers to as complex as launching a satellite into space. By now, we are already aware that computer program is a set of self-contained instructions written in a particular sequence. Such a set of instructions which solves a problem is called an algorithm. For even the most complex problem, we can chalk out a plan to do computations without having to write any code. Concepts like pseudocode and flowcharts give us a way to express our logic at a high level without having to depend upon any programming languages. These are helpful to efficiently convey the instructions required for solving the problem. Pseudocode, as the name suggests, is not real code. It is an informal high-level idea about how you will approach for solving a problem. There are no rules associated for writing pseudocode. It could be a simple list of instruction in English or could be influenced by any programming language that you like. Pseudocode is not just for beginners. Using it, you could quickly break down a bigger problem into smaller issues. This helps in bringing modularity and describing it on a high level. An algorithm can be visually represented using a flowchart. Being visual, it helps in understanding the logic quickly. Few basic symbols used for making flowcharts are flowline, an arrow coming from one symbol and ending at another symbol which represents that the control passes to the symbol the arrow points to. Terminal denotes beginning or the end of the program. Process denotes that something is performed. Decision represents a decision, commonly it is a yes or no question or true or false test. Input output involves receiving data and displaying processed data. Annotations represents comments or remarks about flowchart. Predefined process these are used to show complex processing steps which may be detailed in a separate flowchart. Preparation shows operations for preparing value for a subsequent condition or decision step. Off-page connector used when there are multiple control flows which converge into a single exit flow. Off-page connector similar to the on-page connector except it allows for placing a connector that connects to another page. We would further try to understand the flowchart by taking a problem for calculating the GCD of two digits using Euclid's algorithm. The greatest common divisor, also known as the GCD of set of numbers, is the largest positive integer number that divides all the other numbers in the set without any remainder. It is the biggest multiple of all the numbers in the set. If we take a specific example with two numbers 54 and 888, we know that the least number that could divide both these numbers is 2. But there could also be some other number which is greater than 2 which divides both 54 and 888, this number would be our GCD. The algorithm proceeds by taking smaller of the two numbers and dividing the larger number by it. In our case, we will be dividing 888 by 54. So 16 times 54 will give you 864 and we get 24 as the remainder. We can write this down in the form of dividend equal to divisor multiplied by the quotient and adding the remainder. Now as per the algorithm, we continue dividing the quotient by the remainder and we continue this till the remainder is 0. As per the algorithm, once you get 0 as the remainder, then look up in the previous line and the remainder would be the GCD of those two numbers. This flowchart represents the logic for calculating GCD of two numbers using Euclid's algorithm. There are many other ways to compute the GCD but as an example, we are taking this method as it is quite simple. Since the flowchart does not fit completely in one page, I have used an off-page connector to connect the rest of the flow. You can pause for a while and try to observe and understand the flowchart. We would break this down into smaller section and try to understand how this logic works. We will also do a dry run for calculating the GCD by substituting values in this logic. The algorithm takes two numbers as input. Let us say that those two numbers are assigned to variable a and b. The flow continues processing further instructions only if the value of b is not equal to 0. In step 2, if the value of b is 0, 
then algorithm outputs the value assigned to variable a as the gcd step 3 to 7 are looping instructions meaning that they will keep repeating until the condition of number b becoming equal to 0 is satisfied if value of a is greater than b then we will subtract value of a from value of b and store the result in b alternatively if the value of a is less than b then we will subtract value of b from value of a and store the result in a we are essentially performing division over here similar to our previous example we would do this a couple of time till the value of b becomes 0 once that happens value of a is output as the gcd we can do a dry run for testing this algorithm we take the values from our previous example and we have a as 54 and b as 888 as per the flow as 888 is not equal to 0 and 54 is not being greater than 888 we would subtract 54 from 888 and store the result in b so b now has the value of 834 these steps continue a couple of time till the value of b becomes 24 and the value of a remains as 54 now when we check for a being greater than b in step 2 it evaluates to true as 54 is greater than 24 at this point of time the control comes to step 6 and we subtract the value of b from a that is 54 minus 24 which is equal to 30 in this manner we continue till the value of b becomes 0 finally the value of a which is 6 is output as the gcd of 54 and 888 in this session we learned about pseudo codes and flow charts We saw how they can be used to express our approach for problem solving and help us in coming up with instructions for writing our source code. In the next session, we would continue learning about common rules for programming language. If you like what we are doing, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. We have a whole lot of things to share with you, so do subscribe to our channel. Your suggestions and queries are welcome. Leave us a comment or write to us at hello at the rate skillhive dot co. Always happy to help you. 